Well, welcome to another super cool video from the Goat Shed. Today we're working on Gottlieb's high hand from 1973. But before we start, let's show you the new member of the Goat Shed. This is Abby, everyone. She's a Pomeranian, a rescue dog. She was only picked up the weekend before I got back from the USA. Those of our viewers may know, we've seen our previous dog, Daisy, which is Graham's brother's dog, sadly died. So this is the replacement. So here she is. We can all watch her grow old together. Good girl, Abby. So today is Friday, the 4th of November, 2022. It's 15 degrees Fahrenheit outside, which is about 59 degrees Celsius. So this high hand has been a, in a guy's family for many years, and he's spending a lot of time and effort and money getting it fixed up. So what's happened so far is we've had to replace, or we didn't, the guy who does all our cabinets, had to replace all this area here. That all had to be redone, and... Um, it's been screwed back down. You can see the, the where it's all been repaired and everything like that. The only mistake he's made, you see the two holes there, just here and there. There's no rebate in there, so the rebate's got to be done. So we drilled the holes out. Now, we've done all the work on this so far and made it and prettied it up. It's all been painted this machine's got a new back glass having a new cabinet and everything. But here's what we've done so far. So all the step units have been pulled out. There's the ball count unit that's been done. Um, all the usual things we do. Don't forget to look at our previous video on ball count units. And while we're on that, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Very important to us. We always take the mech board out of the light box and work on it now. We've found that to be so much easier. Um, we've done the credit unit. We've done all the score reels are all done. And new coil sleeves have gone in each one of those. All the relays have been done. The match relay, or the 0 to 9 has been done. Here comes Abby. Um, so all those things have been done. We tighten every switch stack there for, for the relays. That, that's these, of course. Screws, they come loose. Where's my pointer? Here it is. You ensure that all the screws on the score reels are tight and everything like that. Whoops, the dog's stuck. Now, like always, and we emphasise this, a visual inspection is worth... Um, a thousand words for for argument's sake it can save you a lot of time like when we visually inspected this at first we we noticed a wire off one of these relays so and i think it was uh like a power wire or something i can't remember so you know you would have been having trouble there uh, as i mentioned the um the match unit or the naught to nine unit hey ronnie the naught to nine unit has been serviced. That one's got a switch on it, so you've got to pay extra attention to those. Make sure the switch is opening and closing. That's that switch there. I'm not sure what that does on this game, but it probably turns something on and off. Um, so this will go back in now. We've, we're happy with this. It'll go back into the cabinet. And uh, let me just show you that. I think we've had a quick look at this in another video, but here it is. There's the cabinet, all newly painted and stenciled and looking lovely so those cabinets are built from scratch now what we've got to do now we're going to bring the motor we're going to put that head mech back in that cabinet and then we'll um we'll put the back glass back in it and then we can put that away till we're ready to get it all going uh this machine is going to have a play field overlay made for it that's happening as we speak and the chap was talking to us about that yesterday, so that should be good. And um, that'll really make the machine nice. Any of you that have seen our previous video on um, a Sweethearts we had here, 
that's exactly the way it'll look. And that sweetheart's look absolutely beautiful. So this machine's going to look a treat. We've got new legs for it. There's the cabinet. We haven't got the new legs on yet. We've got our little workshop legs on that we use here with rollers on them. Makes it a bit easier to get around. Um, it's had new um, side rails on it by the look of it. Um, and uh, that's right, we're waiting on a front door. There's a front door on the way from the USA as we speak. I think it's getting sent directly here so we can, we can put that on. So that's where we're up to so far. And um, we'll show you what we get up to next. So now we've completely removed the motor board from the machine, or some people like to call it the bottom panel. Now, this is initially a precursory examination of the motor board. We've actually already removed the step unit ready for cleaning in the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll get that underway. But just to show you, I mean, we've done lots of videos on, on these, but... This here is really sticky, not moving well at all. There's all gummed up dirt in there, you can see. And that's gotta be all thoroughly cleaned. This is why we pull them right apart. Once again, refer to our videos on how to refurbish a Gottlieb stepper unit. We've done many of those in the past. Now, what we'll do with this motorboard in a moment, we'll get the compressor on and we'll, we'll air blow the the board just to clean up all the debris on there um, a quick look and we've already found something I don't know if you can see it there but uh, just here there's a spring missing off that see that relay is flopping around there's a spring missing off there so that's the Q relay the bonus score relay that relay is adjusted fairly close. So without that spring there during gameplay, there's possibility of vibration giving you all sorts of weird and wonderful problems. So this is why it's so worth doing this, going over it and checking it out thoroughly. Now, one of the other things that we like to do is, is we like to check every wire. And so as we do each relay, we'll, we'll grab hold of the wire and we'll move it and tug it and move it to make sure it's just not going to break off. Do the same with the transformer, the score motor. It doesn't take long to do and once again it can save you a lot of heartache and headache. Now fortunately this particular game we do have the schematic for so if we get into too much trouble we're, we're lucky we've got that. So that's, that's a good thing for us. Now, note this game has one of those, what we call, interlock relays. This is the V relay down the end here. This one here. Now, they have a little mechanical latch on them, and we always pull that latching mechanism apart, get the Dremel clean it, make sure there's no dirt or grease on the edge, so that they snap in and out well. If they don't, they can give you a bit of trouble. Um, Gottlieb used these a lot on the um, on the baseball games, you know, for the the running man, or I think it is, or the man out, or something like that. Um, and in a few of the other um, wedgehead games, now Spanky's up there having a bit of a look at what's going on at the moment. Now, one thing we always pay attention to is the rivet plate here on the on the game. So we have the rivet plate here. Let's get it into focus, there you go. Now having a look at the back, always get a meter and run from here to there, etc., all around to make sure you've got continuity. We actually had a game once where just right there on the edge, the wire was broken away. It was really hard to see, it was on a player unit with it naked eye and it wasn't until we actually must have got our finger on it and, and moved it so hard to see it was unsolded but it was so you get a meter and do that always a, a, a glance at the the rivets themselves um this one i can't 
can't really get that in the picture, can I? This one's a bit hard to see. But yeah, look at all the rivets and make sure they're not worn or anything like that. Um, just spin this around a touch. There we go. Now, all these are pretty good. They're just going to need a good clean up with a Scotch Bright pad and, and so on. Always check the switches, clean those with a Dremel. Um, now, the other things we'll be doing to this, we'll be removing, removing the score motor out of the cradle and lubricating the bearings underneath. There's a felt pad. We've done, showed this in videos before, once again. This is not how to do it, this is what to do. Clean all the Jones plugs while you've got them out, the male and female sides. Now, when I was in America recently, my good friend John Peterson uh, alerted me to a, a Dremel tool, which is very thin. Uh, not the 443 carbon brush, but something thinner. I, I'm not sure what you call them. Um, I have to unpack those yet and get them out. Um, they're down at my friend's place in Sydney. Uh, so that's 100 miles away. So he'll be coming up before Christmas and we'll have those. We'll show you what we do there. They look really good to use. And you can get them down into in between the switches without without even having any you know problem bending the blade. And it also allows you to check for spinning contact pads on the game. So that's a good thing. I look forward to receiving that. So lubricating those score motors is really, really important. Um and also checking that the armature moves up and down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Um, the next thing we'll do after I do the bonus unit in the um, ultrasonic cleaner, I'll take out each relay out of the game and we'll clean it and check it but before you adjust any relay, always remember you must tighten the screws up on the, on the stack <clears throat> because they do come loose. If you don't tighten those up, I probably had mum in. That's these screws we talk about here. One there and one there. Your adjustment will not really be valid because it's, it's loose and it's going to maybe shrink or expand or contract, I should say, in warmer or colder weather. I mean, in Australia, it's totally different to the USA. Uh, we don't get freezing conditions like you do in the Midwest and East to areas. <clears throat> but we do get high humidity here on the coast where we live. But really, you don't get a lot of trouble. All my pinball machines live in a garage with... Um, you know, fibro-type walls and a tin roof. There is a bit of insulation around. And it does get hot in there in the summer, but I've really never had any major switch problems in that regard. And I play my machines generally every day, except when it's really hot. So there. Um, that's what well worth doing. Now, while we're on that subject, another thing that we do like to do is... Um, Make sure that the, the label pl uh, labels are there that, that tell you what the relays are. Now, they're available from um, Peter Koch's um, Pinball Rebel in Kochito, or it is, or something like that. Or some are, but if you have any and you scan any, if you send those to Peter, he'll add them in. It's, it's so handy to know what relays what. You know, half the time the that says the Q relay, and down there it tells me that that's the the bonus score relay. Now, if that's not there, all is not lost. You've just got to look for a, at the schematic, and the schematic will be able to inform you what relay is what. Now, on the schematic, it tells you in the relay list that the Q relay has, in this case, one form A switch on it. Now, there's form A, form B, form C, and form AA switches. Form A is normally open switch. Form B is a normally closed switch, and Form C is a make-break switch, and Form AA um, is a, a, a make-make 
or a brake brake switch, whichever way you look at it, I guess. But the most common ones are Form A, Form B and Form C. So if you were looking for that Q relay, in the relay list it would tell you that the Q relay had one Form A switch on it and you've only got to locate the relay and identify the wire colour. So we've got um, yellow and blue or yellow and purple. I'm not quite sure what that is. The sun's coming through there. And that's how you would identify it. So all is not lost. Remember that, people. So... Let's carry on with this now and we'll show you our progress. Right, carrying on with the repairs on the motorboard, we've just completed the bonus step unit. Now, we don't have to remind you how critical these bonus step switches are to pull them apart and clean them. We're banged on about that all the time, so if you take our advice, you'll be happy. If you don't, you may be unhappy. But on a high hand, it has a a sort of a unique bonus system. When I say unique, it's got um, the plate with six notches in it. We'll just point to those notches now. There they are. There. And you so can on. see. You can see them all. Now, what we've done also to this bonus when plate when we pulled it apart, you'll notice there's all new braid on there. So we've removed each of the. We'll, we'll call them snowshoes, contact pins, but snowshoes seems to be the popular. Cleaned them all up, filed them up a little bit rounder if they were a little flatter and fixed it up. None of them were worn badly, they didn't warrant replacement and we didn't need to change any springs in this one which was good. Uh, that's the springs that um, when you uh, pull them in and out they spin back, they, they go backwards. A bit hard to see that but you can hear those snapping into place. Now when you put this bonus unit back together there's critical adjustment is, is that as you operate it, it operates five steps We'll just get this one to home. Now notice that switch drops in and the switch <clears throat> on the outside is normally closed and the one on the inside is normally open. When we step up one, that process will reverse. And the secret here is to make sure that when the switch comes off, the little metal arm there falls into the notch that the switches make and break correctly. So here we go, we're coming around. Last step, fifth step and it's broke and there's a little bit of gap between that metal plate and it's not binding on the contact plate. Now this is adjustable by the three screws here and if it, you can't get it right you need to adjust the spider web with the two allen screws on it that those screws fit on. So you do it and check it on every particular one, every particular step needs to be checked and, and it may be adjusted. Because sometimes the only form of final adjustment is by moving the switches laterally. And they're not really designed to do that, but sometimes you've just got to adjust them a little bit. Okay, so that's that step unit. Now, since we've last looked, we've uh, lubricated the score motor. That's all done now. Well, we'll hold that still. That was by simply taking the, the uh, score motor out of the cradle, turning it upside down and lubricating the felt. Now I'm an advocate of machine oil, sewing machine oil. I, I don't use 3-in-1. I, I don't have a problem with it, but I think it may have a little bit of silicon in it. And we have experienced problems with silicon before. We were using a bicycle chain lube that did have silicon and I did get a problem. But... Sewing machine oil is the way to go, I believe. It's readily available no matter what country in the world you live in. I think Singer sewing machines were synonymous throughout the world. I think you can go, go to a sewing machine shop today and still buy Singer sewing machine oil. But we buy it in bulk, in large 20-litre drums. Probably more than enough here for the rest of our lives. So the motorboard will get fitted back into the machine soon. Now we're waiting on the play field to get returned to us. Remember, there's a new overlay being made for the play field. Um, that's coming along. The owner was here last week, Thursday, I think it was, showing us what was happening and wasn't happening with that. He's had drawings done with vectorization and all this sort of stuff. Hell, I don't even understand half this stuff. But anyway, he's had it done before and it's all getting done. So we're happy with this motorboard now. We don't think there'll be anything more to do to it or we get to troubleshooting. 
Remember, we did find a, what did we find? A broken wire and a missing spring off a, off a relay. That relay up there, we've now put a spring on it. And that was adjusted close, so that could have caused potential problems. That's actually the bonus. Yeah, that was the um, bonus, score. bonus score relay. The great thing about this game, high hand, there's only nine relays in it, but of course the play field has all the drop targets, etc. So there's more work to do there. Just another thing while we're on the, 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 the subject, there's a switch here that is critically important. I'll see if we can get it in. Here it is here. Can we get the switch there? There it is. This is a slam switch. Now, the idea of that is if the machine's kicked from underneath or something like that, that weight will vibrate and break the switch and break the circuit. And of course, this switch has the 110 volts going across it, so be very careful when you're working around that. Very similar to the older games, which had the kickoff switch, where you turn the game off, you kicked it from underneath. So if you have any problem here, or any of the slam switch on the front door, the back box, they're the ones normally closed, the front door, the back box, and the motorboard one, and there's one normally open underneath the play field. That doesn't generally give much problems, and in a home environment, I shouldn't imagine it can be adjusted out of the road. But you've only got to have one wire off one of those switches, and you won't have power to your game. So always look look after those. We've actually had the Dremel and cleaned that switch. And, of course, we've checked uh, all the fuse holders, which are here. We've checked those. They're all good. We've given them a bit of a clean up, so we don't need to change them. Fortunately, the Gottlieb ones are fairly, fairly well done. So that's where we're up to with this game. Spanky's now given his approval for us to be able to put the motorboard away and move on to the next task. And I don't think we can do much more because we haven't really got the play field. No. So that's about all. On, starting on the yeah, so we'll get on to our next job this morning now, and um, I think that's going to be um, either surfer or actually a central park we've got to do. Mm. Anyway, we'll, we'll sort that out. That's not your problem, viewers. Okay. So this has been another Goat Shed presentation. <laughs>